That is a prime Jurassic Lake yeah, rainbow trout. Oh, thank you, buddy. Oh, I've never <laughs> kissed a trout, <laughs> but this guy. <laughs> David Thoreau said, many men go fishing all of their lives without knowing that it is not the fish they are after. Look at the size of that thing! <laughs> I'm Dennis Isbister. For me, fishing has been a part of my whole life. From the time I could walk, I've been chasing fish <laughs> and whatever adventure seemed to follow it. I'm Drew Murin, and since I was a little kid, my dad and I have fished all over the western United States together. And all I've wanted to do ever since was travel the world, have a little fun, and fish with my good friend Dennis. Did you see that, baby? <laughs> so follow along with us as we travel the remote regions of the globe in search of wild fish and wild places. Here's our camp spot yeah. for the night, roughing it. <laughs> this is as good as the main lawn. Yeah, we're right on that little point right there. Yes, huh? Okay. All right, ready to go. When they told me they were opening up uh, another section of the lake with another lodge and outpost camp, I mean, this is one of the things, you know, about, about me. Why Wild Fish Wild Place was even built in the first place is I want to go to the farthest reaches. I want to go to the places that have never been fished. I want to fish for fish that have never seen a person. Got it. New spot. Cool thing about fishing here, you go to a new spot every day. It's a place I haven't fished yet. But we're on the other side of the lake and uh, we got the seagull boat. So we're going to get the boats uh, pumped up. Rumors of a 30 pound trout hanging out around here. He said there's weed beds all through this bay. So we're going to get in the boats put on a sink tip and we're just gonna explore, see if we can find big fish today. Pretty fortunate to be able to be over here. And uh, now we get to go out and experience the lake in a way that not a lot of people get to. So uh, I'm pretty excited to get out there and catch some fish. One of the goals coming down here with the new uh, Seagull pack fish boats is to really explore this water on the other side of the lake. You know, they fish it a little bit, uh, mostly from the bank and stuff. So uh, the last time we were here, we really wanted to get out on these boats. We've got a, a day that is conducive to being out on the water in these. In Argentina, you know, you don't get a lot of those days. So today's the day. We've got a big, beautiful bay. We're gonna get the pack fishes out. See if we can uh, find some fish. Usually what we go by is if we're fishing together, let's say Dennis is using an olive, I'm using a black, and he starts ripping fish, then we're gonna switch, go ahead and switch mine. You're a little bit more patient if you're both fishing and nobody's catching anything. You know, give it some time, try it in different areas, try it like a different drift. Um, like give it a solid few casts before you switch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rig up, uh, we're gonna rig up some sinking tips, put some sinking tips on the end of our rods and basically just kind of get in position and either strip over top of the weed beds that we find. We'll probably paddle around for a little bit first to try to find. Now there is a little breeze blowing, so it's gonna be, we're not gonna be able to like sit in one spot, but we'll be able to get position and just let those sink tips and the flies get down to six or eight feet deep and just swim them along and wait for a big one to eat it. I'm not the best caster in the world, so I decided to get out into the Sea Eagle and just kind of work the shore, you know, just beyond casting distance. I think I was out there maybe 30, 40 yards and just working this, this um, section. 
unbelievable. I mean, that was probably the thing that I enjoyed most about it when I hooked up on my first fish was the battle. I mean, it was never ending. One of the things I forgot to do was bring a net. So the battle was unbelievable. And I mean, the fish was below me. It was side. There's a couple times where I literally had to take my rod and rip it around because that fish was doing everything in his power to, to, to shake me. Honestly, without the seagull, I wouldn't have had the day that I had yesterday, for sure. The sun just started popping out. We had, uh, we got on this point here, nice little drop. And uh, as soon as the chop came, caught a fish. Then it cleared up, and uh, so, yeah. yeah! That black? <laughs> <laughs> so, Jessica wants to go, now that the sun's out, she wants to go back to green. So we're gonna put a green on, um, and then I'm gonna keep a purple one on, just to see, cause that's what I just caught one with. So. <laughs> About 30 yards out and just really slowly drifting. This little bug here and uh, just been killing them. Probably eight on today. Maybe landed five or six of them. A little bit tricky, I didn't bring my net. So uh, I've been hand landing them and just kind of letting the hook out, but what a day. I love this thing, it tracks really great and um, catches fish. are on the boat going trolling kind of slow and I was getting to the point where I needed to recast so I was starting to kind of strip it in but I thought well I'll just try to go really slow and gradual just kind of like very gentle um, just kind of motion and he took it down and I did so <laughs> So that was really the technique that I was trying to emulate out on the water, was just really taking that sea cat, and whether I was with the wind, I'd slow it down a little bit. If I was going against the wind, I'd just kind of put a little action into it that was just causing that, that streamer to dive and dip a little bit, but moving it really slow, and it was the, it was the technique, because I put about 15 on and about uh, 10 or 11 to hand. Just working about literally 30 yards off the, off the shore. Just back and forth, back and forth. Pulling a black streamer. And really, it has been game on today, for sure. Getting towards the middle of the day on the other side of the lake, it just wasn't happening for whatever reason. Um, Brian was still catching some out of the boat. I caught a couple out of the boat. Well, of course I wanted to stay, right? I'm catching fish, but I didn't really know necessarily what was going on on the beach. Um, so yeah, I mean, back to, yes, I want to catch fish, but I want everybody to catch fish. So um, I, I had no problem leaving at all. I asked Martin, you know, what do you think? He goes, we should leave. So if Martin says we should leave, okay, that's it. Let's just, let's pack up, let's go somewhere else and just go try to find another spot on Jurassic Lake where maybe the fish are not happening. The fight was unbelievable. I mean, that was probably the thing that I enjoyed most about it when I hooked up on my first fish was the battle. I mean, it was never ending. Oh, 
You know, the food here has been exceptional. Again, you see the pictures, um, you know, and the marketing stuff, but you can't taste it from a, from a picture. It looks pretty. The food that they prepared for us, I think we got some pictures of the barbecue. It was amazing. I mean, it was amazing what they did in such a remote area. I think we had steak, sausage, pork, cheese, wine. I mean, really everything that you could want. So the food has just been amazing. So either so you stay close, life jacket on, all that stuff. Get a fish, just get to the bank, and we'll net it and, and keep everything on, and we'll just try to get you close. You know, fighting cool. a fish. Cool. The only problem with this is gonna be fighting a fish and not getting sent out. One of the things we love about the packfish, the seagull packfish, is they have these, this rudder system. Any other boat, you give it a stroke and it, ki it kicks to one side or the other. And these packfishes track perfectly every time and get that fly line right to the fish. It, it worked perfect even in the, in the windy, choppy condition. Exactly. You know, the hook is a jig hook that works like this. Mm -hmm. I need to be like this. Gotcha. Put it up and drop it. Wow, what a fish. All of a sudden, just like that, first fish of the day, 15 pounds, everybody's switching to nymphs. <laughs> Lost one a little bit ago. That one hit it, and then he came back and just destroyed it. I put it back in. I rode a couple times. It was like you ain't getting away this time. Wham! Yeah, but he hit it hard. Like a few that I've had takes on, they hit it real soft. It seemed like that one just hit it like a freight train. The ones that I've been having, they're just crushing. That tips it. Bam! Yeah. The hard part of getting out there is what to do with it. Oh, you guys got to have a net, <laughs> exactly. big old fish. That was the one thing that was nice about the seagulls, you could get in there and just kind of almost just let the current, as long as you kept, kept in position and kept that sink tip down, those fish were just hammering. I mean, you, you hooked into 15 to 18 big rainbows that day. I mean, just an epic day because of them. Another culture is always interesting. You're always learning something. And Martin is our guide, and he's so knowledgeable about this area. He knows all the peaks, he knows the history, and so he was really teaching us a lot about that. So it's really cool they found this Indian spot, this ancient Indian area, where they had the the rocks all built up, kind of up on a bluff here. Um, and there's no obsidian for 50 kilometers around. They used to have to go trade with other Indians that had obsidian to make arrowheads. So there's a spot, you're just walking out across there. There's just a spot 
big rocks, a little shelter that they had, and shards of obsidian everywhere where they used to, you know, get together and make arrowheads out of this obsidian. It, it's pretty crazy. It almost looks like broken glass everywhere. So we're working with 50 mile an hour winds. No luck at the first spot. Moving around a little bit. Um, the second place we're trying is deep, really close to the bank. So hopefully we don't have to cast very far, which would be better for me, just saying. So coming into this, this spot, I knew it was deep. I knew we were gonna have a ton of motion, a lot of turbulence in the water. So I, I immediately put on a 10, 11 foot leader, two split shots and a heavy, big black bounce leech because I know that we're gonna have limited time for that thing to be in the strike zone. I finally got it out where it needed to be, and <clears throat> Martine says, that's a good drift, watch it. And sure enough, boom! Fish off. It's a fish on a day like today. So we go stand on these rocks, and the waves are crashing into us. I'm getting completely soaked. The waves are smacking me in the face, and it was awesome. So it was really challenging, it was really fun. It, I did have a hard time with my cast there, which is something that I was worried about because I'm not as experienced as these guys. Um, and so I was, it was challenging trying to flick my fly into the wind and it's 50 miles an hour whipping it the other way. But it was an experience for sure. To have a great time at Estancia Laguna Verde is a given. I mean, this place is first class all the way. The fishing's phenomenal. You're always gonna have fun here, but then, you know, on another level, be able to connect with everybody that's here, have a great time, easy, fun. I love being in a boat compared to being on shore. I mean, I caught more fish on shore so far, but Brian's caught way more fish out of the boat. I just love the flexibility of being in a boat. And, you know, there's, you see all these reefs offshore, weed beds and stuff you can't quite get to, but as soon as you get in a boat, you can go check them all out. So that was one of the things coming here with the, with the Sea Eagle boats, you know, the packable, they're so packable, you know, 20 pounds, you get the bag, put your waders and boots in the same bag, and then, you know, get them into a place like this, it's so remote, it gives you the opportunity to check the lake out, you know, check out places that have never seen a boat before, really. fish so well that we can get to areas, once again, that have never been fished. We found weed beds that were out way past casting distances. My buddy Brian Oakland had the best day he's had at Jurassic Lake because of the pack fish. He figured out a technique ripping big rainbow trout out of the pack fish. The seagull boats, they performed, you know, I mean, perfect. Abe Blair, now he's, if you don't know Abe Blair, you should check him out. But Abe Blair is one of the most talented photographers I have ever met and one of the most humble, amazing people on the planet. 
And Abe gets to go on these trips with us and we get to have him along. And part of the perks is you get to fish a little bit too. Seems to be the trick to Jurassic Lake is to just not pay attention. More. You sit back and enjoy the beauty of the world out here. You can catch trophy trout. The end of the day, we're over at the other lodge and he breaks out the fly rod and the sinking tip and he's bombing some casts out there and I, I'm out in the seagull and I just hear him scream. And he's hooked up and I know immediately it's a fish of a lifetime when I see it. That is a prime Jurassic Lake yeah, rainbow absolutely. trout. Oh, thank you, buddy. Oh, I've never <laughs> kissed a trout, but this guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh! <laughs> we get over there and, and he brings this fish out of the water and he is in disbelief. He just caught the fish of a lifetime. It's the biggest fish he's ever landed. 18 pound rainbow, I mean, it's that deep. It jumped, it stripped, and you can see the emotion come over him. And he's so happy, and he's just so triumphant, and he's just the fish of a lifetime. For Abe Blair, the photographer, I mean, it made me so happy. Like, I joke about me, you know, wanting the big fish, but I seriously almost got teared up seeing him with the big fish. It was, it was awesome. The lake glasses off, the rain kind of parts, and this rainbow just shines. Brian's in the sea eagle, Jessica's in the foreground, and all we see is Abe, pelican case, cameras hanging everywhere, sprinting as fast, I mean sprinting down the beach to get the right lens or something, I don't know, I'm still fishing. He gets in position and gets this picture of Jurassic Lake perfectly calm and a giant rainbow over the shoulder. I still think he was more excited about the big rainbow trout. <laughs> <laughs>